While Whipwreck was on the outside, Mama Luke went high risk. Oh! The back of Tony Mamluk's head and neck slammed oh! into the middle guardrails. Mamluk was slow to move after the accident, and the match soon came to an end. However, Tony Mamluk didn't suffer any life-altering injuries. And Bruh. All this just oh. ECW was a it was it was just a different time, a different place in wrestling. What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back again with another video. So we're gonna check out wrestlers who were inches away from injury or death. Once again, being in the wrestling business, you gotta be kind of aware of what you're getting yourself into when you step inside that squared circle. Matches usually go the way they're supposed to, but sometimes they don't. And sometimes you can be that close from potentially paralyzing yourself or even death it's a dangerous sport that's why they always say and they've always said this for a very long time do not try this at home of course people still do try it at home but you end up seeing people get hurt or even possibly killed accidentally so much respect to the wrestlers i will always show respect to those who get in the ring even jinder mahal i make the jokes that well, it don't be jokes but i make the you know the points that WWE hasn't booked him well at all, never to be taken really seriously, except for one time. But I do respect the fact that he does get in the ring and he's willing to deal with the pain and the punishment for our entertainment. So at on a base level, I respect all wrestlers. I may not care about how they're being booked or presented on television, but I respect them for getting in that ring and trying to entertain us because it's a dangerous, dangerous sport. Let's get right into this one, it should be a good one. Although wrestlers aren't trying to actually hurt each other, wrestling is still incredibly Ooh. dangerous. The wrestlers you're about to see in this video oh. were inches away from injury or even death. Now, you wouldn't expect someone to drown when competing in a wrestling match, but that did almost happen. Yep. In 1997, yep. Ken Shamrock was wrestling a match in Japan against Vader. Japanese wrestling is a bit different from what you might see in WWE. Yeah. While Japanese wrestling is still predetermined, wrestlers hit each other a bit harder, mm -hmm. and matches can be pretty brutal. Ken Shamrock and Vader did just that oh. in their match, but things nearly turned deadly. Going into the fight, Shamrock had a bad rib and an affected lung. So, Whoa. when Vader powerbombed Shamrock, Shamrock's lungs began to fill with blood. Oh. Vader was supposed to give Ken three power bombs, but Shamrock called off the third, which is what saved his life. Had Vader hit the third power bomb, then Ken Shamrock would have died internally due to the impact. Randy oh. Orton and the Undertaker's feud in Tizzle. Yeah, I'm glad he did call that off. And once again, that's an internal in injury. You don't even really know. Only the person that's like, you know, internally feeling it would know. That's crazy. Jesus. Five was filled with insane stunts. Mm -hmm. A lot of them were pretty risky, and the legend killer was inches away from killing himself a couple of times. One episode of SmackDown saw Randy Orton sit the Undertaker Beak. on the back of a car, <laughs> to which Randy Orton then drove into the SmackDown set. Crazy segment. However, the middle panel was the only one that was rigged to break away, and there was very little room for error. Had Randy been off by just a few inches, he could have seriously injured himself or The Undertaker. Mm -hmm. I had a few angels with me that day, so did Taker. However, this was not the most dangerous stunt Randy Orton and The Undertaker did during This feud, by the way, fucking classic, bro. Young Randy Orton going against Prime Undertaker, this was chef's kiss. <laughs> bro. This, in my opinion, this would made Randy Orton definitely uh, solidified him more as someone to take seriously because he was trying to end The Undertaker and The Undertaker always kept coming back. This was a really good feud, man. In their feud, at no mercy, Randy and his father fought Taker Beak. in a casket match. Beak. The Orton's won and then set the dead man on fire. Oh, come on now. Yep. Come on now. Oh, my God. Somebody get out here. Oh, oh my God. God. Inferno, somebody get out here. Surprisingly, Randy Orton was the one who was actually in danger of being set on fire. After the Orton's had closed the casket, the Undertaker escaped through a secret compartment and mm -hmm. hid under the ring. However, as Randy was bathing the casket in kerosene, the flammable liquid was spilling on the Viper. Oh. I didn't even realize it, but my boots up to my knees were soaked in kerosene. Oh. Once Randy lit the casket, he backed away just in time, but yeah. the flames didn't set him ablaze. Extreme Championship Wrestling and... It don't take much. If if he would have stood a little bit closer, 
he probably would have got accidentally set on fire and that wouldn't have been a good look at all. But, you know, once again, gladly that didn't happen. So more than lived up to its name, multiple wrestlers came Jesus. inches away from death. Sometimes it was by accident. Jeez. Other times it was very intentional. Oh. One such incident happened during a match between Super Crazy and C.W. Anderson. As was the norm in ECW, weapons were introduced into mm -hmm. the match, including tables. Super Crazy attempted to put Anderson through a table, but the foreign object didn't break. This forced Crazy to improvise and perform a moonsault onto an upside down table. However, the table got moved around, causing Crazy to nearly impale himself oh. on Oh my God. Thankfully, he landed in between the feet, saving himself from a very painful and possibly life-altering injury. While we know why Super Crazy survived that incident, it's literally a miracle this next wrestler wasn't paralyzed for life. During another ECW show, Tony Mamaluke was in a match against Mikey Whipwreck. Mamaluke was a fast-paced, high-flying wrestler, which is what led to him nearly losing his life. While Whipwreck was on the outside, Mamaluke went high risk. Oh! The back of Tony Mamluk's head and neck slammed oh, into the metal guardrails. Mamluk was slow to move after the accident, and the match soon came to an end. However, Tony Mamluk didn't suffer any life-altering injuries. And Bruh. All this just oh, ECW was a it was it was just a different time, a different place in wrestling. They. <laughs> They really didn't give two Fs, bro. They were out there to make the crowd ooh and awe and holy shit chance and ECW chance. Because, oh my, bro. I, I don't even know what to say. That's insanity, bro. Just insanity, man. And continued to compete for several more years. This next wrestler was not even inches, but literally centimeters from losing his right arm. During his WCW career, Goldberg was involved in a feud with Bret Hart. Uh -huh. Part of the storyline saw Goldberg chase Hart out of the arena. Yep. In his rage, Goldberg went and smashed the windows of a nearby segment. limousine. To pull off the stunt, Goldberg had a small piece of pipe concealed in his black gloves. However, after breaking the first window, Goldberg dropped the pipe. Since he was on live TV, he couldn't pick up the pipe. So instead, Goldberg literally smashed the rest of the windows with his bare hand. That's However, wild, this caused bro. a shard of glass to slice an artery in Goldberg's arm. Yep. The WCW superstar lost a lot of blood before getting into the emergency room, yep. and it was so bad that Goldberg nearly had to have his arm amputated. The doctors were able to prevent that, but Goldberg was out of action for several months simply because he dropped a pipe. Well, yep. this yep. He That's crazy. Goldberg in his prime was just a different animal, bro. For to keep the segment going, he busted the open the first one. He had the pipe in his hand, but then the sec it fell out, so he had to keep it going. And he bust the other window with his actual bare forearm. But obviously, doing that cut your arm up. That's insanity, bro wrestler didn't lose his life, he did suffer damage that he still lives with today. Early in his career, Perry Saturn was wrestling a match in ECW against Pitbull number two. Not surprisingly, the fight spilled out into the crowd. Perry then hit a moonsault off the middle rope and into the outside. Oh. However, Pitbull didn't catch Saturn correctly, causing Saturn's head to hit oh. the floor. Perry Saturn's skull was busted open, but despite that, Saturn acted like nothing was wrong and finished the match. However, the accident did give Perry chronic traumatic encephalopathy or CTE. Oh, what makes the story oh, a little bit heartwarming is what Perry Saturn would do years later. In December 2000, Perry Saturn was wrestling a match on Monday Night Raw against Chris Jericho. Unlike the incident with Pitbull, Saturn's match with Jericho was a standard wrestling match. Plus, Perry and Y2J had wrestled each other several times before, so it seemed like it couldn't be a more safe environment. During their fight, Jericho went for a moonsault from the middle rope, just like what Perry had done years uh -huh. earlier. However, something was off, and Chris's head began to plummet straight towards the mat. Ooh. Saturn's quick reaction yeah. allowed him to use his right leg and arm to protect his opponent from a serious injury. Had now nah, that was quick thinking he was able to protect him and that's your job in the ring as the opponent to look like you're not trying to protect the person but if you see something about to go wrong do what you can to protect it but not make it seem as if you're trying to help them to everybody else that's watching so that was cool of him to be aware of the situation at hand
Had Perry not done that, what happened to him years earlier is what could have happened to Chris Jericho. Yeah. As you saw with Randy Orton, WWE wrestlers have to Ooh. be versatile. It's not uncommon for wrestlers to learn how to perform dangerous stunts in yeah. a short amount of time. Like when Kane had to learn how to set himself on fire mm -hmm. safely. Classic match. Kane's on While the Big Red Machine was okay, Stone Cold Steve Austin was literally inches away from death when performing a huge stunt. During Austin's feud with Triple H and DX, the Rattlesnake famously destroyed the group's bus. Classic. However, this one incident nearly killed Stone Cold. While trying to operate the machine, Austin was moving the crane so the beam would drop in the right place. However, as he was doing that, the beam began to swing and was inches away from smashing into the driver's seat. Had that happened, this stunt would have been remembered for a much different reason. Unfortunately, this wasn't the only stunt that nearly killed Stone Cold Steve Austin. And I'm pretty sure they had probably cut it so it didn't look like he was having issues with moving, you know, that, that whole little beam that he was moving. Um, I'm sure this was like a pre-recorded segment, obviously. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, I don't know. But I'm sure they did some type of... TV magic tree magic to make sure you know you didn't see him struggling with it as much as possible. During Stone Cold's feud of the Rock, one instant saw Steve Austin run over the Rock's car in the monster one. truck, then drive up to the ring. While waiting for his cue to enter the arena, though, Steve Austin was waiting inside the monster truck and began to breathe in the fumes from the giant vehicle. Oh. Stone Cold was waiting for so long they started to have trouble breathing. Had it been any longer, Austin admits he would have died. Look at how Damn. fast Roddy Piper can make a beer bottle disappear. Just checked it, does not see. You might think that the bottle was made from sugar glass, yeah. like what they use in movies. However, that was a real glass bottle Piper hit himself with, as evident by the cut it gave him. This was without a doubt a very dangerous stunt, and it's more than likely that Piper felt the effects of it after the segment was over. We've seen it. Yeah, wrestling, wrestlers were different back then, bro. That's wild. Like, what are we, what the fuck? Rest in peace, but Jesus. That's wild. I, I was thinking it's like sugar glass. No, that was... Nah, give me a, a real glass bottle. I'm, I'm, sugar glass? The fuck? No. That's... <laughs> In other clips, how dangerous it is for a wrestler to dive to the outside, but the person taking the move is also in a lot of danger, yes. as you'll see here. Early in X-Pac's career, he was wrestling a match when his opponent hit a senton to the outside. <laughs> X-Pac's opponent was okay, but X-Pac was not. The future D-Generation X member hit his head on the concrete floor, which knocked him out. The other Damn. wrestler had to literally pull X-Pac's body into the ring to pin him and end the match. Once he got to the hospital, doctors discovered the accident created a blood clot in X-Pac's brain. While X-Pac didn't die, he was told that he would never wrestle again. Never only lasted four months, yeah. and X-Pac was back in the ring and eventually found himself competing in WWE. This next wrestler was inches away from breaking his neck. In January 2024 oh, no. on AEW Dynamite, Stan Darby Allen fought Kenoshike Kateshita and Powerhouse Hobbs in a tag team match. Hobbs and Kateshita had taken control of the match and gained up on Darby. They then grabbed Allen by his arms yeah, and this legs one. Yep. and chucked him across the oh, ring. Oh my god! However, Darby oh. Allen had too much oh, momentum, oh, oh, oh. causing his head to collide with the rope. Allen was okay, but the accident looked ugly. Unfortunately, not- Yeah, bro, I- that, I saw that. That shit was fucking sick. I don't. I want y'all to understand. Anytime you hit your head on those ropes, it it's like damn near hitting a brick wall, bro. <laughs> they they're so tight that all that momentum and then you quickly stop. It's like a brick wall, and he definitely couldn't have been. He could have been seriously injured, bro. Not everyone is as lucky as Darby Allen. Yeah. Some wrestlers have gotten seriously hurt and even died in the ring. To see that, watch this video. Man, this yeah, this was uh this was wild, bro. This was definitely wild, man. Once again, respect to the wrestlers who decide to get in the ring, bro. This just I <laughs> that one clip with the guardrail. Oh, I had never seen that clip, so that made me cringe like crazy. But comment down below. Let me know which one of these clips was the craziest in your opinion. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Road to 150K. And I'm seeing you on the speed of YouTube wrestling champion world. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all next one. Peace.